Dear Mom, did you ever wonder about the moment you became you? I've been thinking about that lately. I mean, the moment that decides how we forever look at the world. I remember that moment perfectly. Mom, what are those? For me, it was with you. They're picture frames. Seeing that one, a little boy is getting a bedtime story from his grandpa. Up there, they're putting up the Christmas tree. Boxes of light, windows into life. Every frame begs me for a story. Uh, you okay over there? I don't know. I mean, I just don't, I feel like I'm flying blind. I don't know if the colors I'm using are right. I, I don't know. Well, if you're really nice, you could ask for help. Really? So, yeah, I do this for a living. I mean, this. Do you have one of those kits that they use on you? Of course, I never leave home without it. I just got a new one yesterday. Kind of magical. It's basically the secret to my entire career is this little box. Almost anyone can use it, but no one knows about it. There's this really special red color. It comes in a little tiny box at eight. I could just paint that on you. Look at that. So you wouldn't have to do that. It would stay all day, that cramp. Thank you. Thank you for the invaluable <laughs> help. They just delivered a tree. Huh, really? I hadn't noticed. Have you got your one yet? Now, why would a girl who lives alone need a tree? You could put my present under it. <laughs> but seriously, though, like, I, I don't know, like, on video, it's like, should I be wearing more blush? Like, should it be more colorful or less? Is this going to appear like I wouldn't like, worry like about it. Doll. It's FaceTime. I mean, you're basically just going to be a frozen image, like an emoji, like smile emoji, sad emoji, raise the roof emoji. Your bras are going to raise the roof. Is there a bra emoji? Why didn't they send a real crew, though, you know? Like they do for me. OK, I've got an idea. You can do it, right? I mean, you love my bras. You I just do. talk about how much you love them. Girls around the country will want you to love their bras. It'll work really well. Problem is, the only thing I can describe is how to take them off. OK, do I look OK? Is it seriously? Let me see. <laughs> stop, stop, stop it. No, no, no. OK, OK. Oh, that's a good one. But we haven't played that before. Hey, guys. Joining us live from her stunning home in New York City to talk about her new Haute Couture bra line that is tearing up the runways, ladies and gentlemen, is Georgina Scott. Georgina, welcome. Gosh, you look phenomenal, and I can't even see your bra. Well, thank you. Um, you sure know what to say to a girl. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. My goodness, what is going on? Fashion Week has been all a buzz about your bras. Who knew there was so much new to do with boob support? <laughs> well, never underestimate a woman's love of dressing up, even when she's undressed. Now, I thought we had seen a tour with Victoria's Secret and their diamond bras. Tell us, what has everyone so excited? Well, look, I'm a gal who loves sparkle, and those diamond bras are incredible spectacles and amazing works of art. But I wanted to create something that every woman could buy and own and have that same wow factor in their own bedroom. We use hand-printed silks. We use antique lace, uh, vintage Czech crystals. I wanted to sort of do a tip of the hat to some of the most beautiful and ethereal styles of the past that inspired me all my life. I've never seen bras made of this fabric or design. They're so sophisticated, like you can wear them in the street. I think that every piece of clothing that goes on your body should be as beautiful as possible, not just functional, but infused with the art of fashion. Now, speaking of fashion and supermodels, you are dating the absolutely resplendent Sebastian, the iconic face of Bateau Cologne. So we're guessing, Georgina, that he's probably your first guinea pig, is that right? Um, let's just say that he is supportive of my work and leave it at that for daytime television. <laughs> yeah, so when can us ladies get our hands on these? Well, all gals and maybe some guys can get their hands on them uh, starting tomorrow on Fifth Avenue and this weekend across the nation. Georgina Scott, always a pleasure. Congrats on your success. And look, I know now what my wife is getting for her birthday. <laughs> The pleasure was all mine. Thank you so much, you guys. Coming up, a revealing new interview with Russell Crowe.
crow. You won't want to miss it. So? Well, that was amazing. Hey. Mm. <sighs> well, they did all the heavy lifting, but more importantly, how did it look? Like every guy was fantasizing about what bra you were wearing. <laughs> Blown up. Oh. Becca, the service is over and we're, we're back at the house now. Everyone's asking for you. Please come. I know you're upset. I, I, we didn't get a chance to finish. I need to explain, so we, we just have to talk, okay? Bye. Miss Scott, I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Georgina, please. Couture has decided to do a feature on your spring line in our May issue, featuring a June Bride theme. How do you feel about that? I think that's fantastic news. Oh my God, thank you so much. Good, well, we're all very excited about it over here. In fact, I have a fan who'd very much like to meet you. Hello, Miss Scott. It is such a pleasure to meet you. I attended your show during Fashion Week, and. I just wanted to say that I thought it was so incredible. Thank you. No, you look familiar. Do we know each other somehow? Oh, um, the Pig and Cow building. Of course. I live there, too. Wow, what a small world, right? <laughs> oh, so nice to meet you. Bye. Do you have any children, Georgina? No, 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 I don't. No. Well, it's impossible not to mess up, even when you do everything right. No, oh, it looks like you did everything right. <laughs> anyway. Send me your sketches as soon as you can, and we'll see what we can do to do a gorgeous, splashy layout. It, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much. Becca, come on. Well, we've got the reading of the will tomorrow. I, we just let me know you're okay. Can you call us? All right, I love you. Bye. Hello, hi, I'm home. What are you doing? Hey, just finishing up some work. What are you doing? Just gonna cook you some dinner. What are you doing? Hi. We can't afford any of this stuff. Oh no, this is just uh, some things we needed for the new recipes. My God, Kevin, who cares about new recipes? Well, this thing is gonna rise and fall because of the recipes. That's cute, that's really cute. Why don't you keep punning your way into bankruptcy and we are gonna have to go and live, you know, with your grandma in Newark. Would you please stop worrying so much? I'm sure we're gonna get a call from the loan guy really soon. We able to set up that nice little space in Soho we talked who about. Who are we kidding? You are a straight guy who wants to sell pastries in Lower Manhattan. That doesn't exactly sound like a slam dunk. And meanwhile, we're almost all the way through our savings and you're creating new recipes? I Kevin. hardly think a few hundred dollars worth of truffle oil is going to put us over the edge. Well, that's the point. It's not just a few hundred dollars. It's a few hundred dollars over and over and over again. And I can understand why you're nervous. You don't understand. Because I am the person who has to work an actual job while you get to just smell and taste your way into this fantasy world. You know, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting when I stormed out of my parents' house to be with you. I wanted to stay that vibrant, a reverent person. And now I'm policing your groceries? I mean, Kevin, I really want to start our adult life together. And you just made me into the person who has to clean everything up. Rigby. Queen. 
Hi. Hi. What's all this? Uh, the vinyl towers? It's the set I had built for you. Oh, you're a carpenter, too. <laughs> well, lucky for us, then. What the hell is it? Well, it was from an interview that I read of yours where you said you related more the golden age of rock, you know, 60s, 70s vinyl. More analog than digital, so it's kind of throwback, but all you. All right. Okay. Well. Thank you. <laughs> Head down. <laughs> <laughs> Becca, where are you? I know you're confused and hurt. I am too. I'm here. I know it makes you feel good, but you do know that weed is a carcinogen, right? Okay, cool, because that's what worries me most right now. Thanks. Don't you hate smelling like a frat house when you go to work? Sorry, you have to see me lower myself to stoner status. There's a picture of you on Quinn's site from the concert. You should check it out. You look pretty cool. Please do not post that to Facebook. I will never hear the end of it from my mother. Too late. Your parents probably have your apartment wired with hidden cameras anyway. She's going to lose her mind when she finds out where you're working. Please. She would never be caught dead south of 63rd Street. Downtown might as well be another country to her. Besides, don't you want people to see how cool you look? I do look pretty cool. See? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Yes, that's me. Uh-huh. Got the tickets at work. <laughs> Shh. What? Oh, that, that's not a guy, Mom. That's Trisha Williams. Yeah, my roommate from Andover. Remember? We're on FaceTime. Yeah, she's having some personal problems, and I'm helping her out with some stuff. Well, it's good of you to help out an old friend. So where did she end up? Rutgers? It's not a state school. <laughs> a perfectly good waste of prep school education. Stop it, Mother. She got into Yale early decision. Same school that waitlisted me. Yes, not everyone can afford Ivy. But you are a Princeton grad in the entry program of Wells and Kinney. Yes. You know what? I did graduate from Princeton, where I magically made it off the wait list, and I did magically get into the most competitive entree program in all of Manhattan. I have to go, Mom. But the markets are closed. Look, I thought maybe we could hang out a little bit, and, you know, I'd like to hear all about what's going on. Nope. Still working. I'm making a delivery for one of the partners. Delivery? Yeah. That's how they break us in. Can you believe the bastards? You gotta catch the subway, I'm gonna lose you. Why don't you take a cab? Or, you know, call Howard, he's downstairs. Hey. Hey. Okay? Yeah. Tony. Tony! You set the table, please. Dinner time. Every time. Did you hear from Becca today? What do you think? I think it's time for me to call her. No. She's mad at me. She's gonna be just as mad at me when she finds out the truth. You know, this isn't just happening to you. I don't know that, Peter. I don't know what to do. I Maybe mean, we should just let her process things and come to us when she's ready. How is she gonna process it if she doesn't know everything, is what I'm saying. She's not gonna talk to you either. Maybe. Tony, how do you feel about leaving your Aunt Becca a message? She's not my Aunt Becca. Come on. You guys are liars. You lied to her and you lied to me. Maybe if you weren't so afraid of a fight, we wouldn't all be living a total and complete lie. Don't talk to your mother that way. I can't believe how weak you guys are. You lied. Could have just told us the truth. Oh, yeah? You have no idea what you're talking about. 
You're right, Dad. I don't know what I'm talking about because you never tell me anything. No, no, let him be. Let him be. Early birthday present. What? Want to look? Yes, what is it? <sighs> is that Times Square? <laughs> <laughs> But not just Times Square, this is gonna be everywhere. What you did on that shoot was magical. You really captured him. Queen and his team wants your images to define from now on across the planet. And Queen wants to hire you. No. Mm -hmm. Really? Why? For what? Well, uh, for some more shoots, obviously, but uh, maybe a sponsorship campaign. Mm. Great. Look, um, I, I don't wanna you know, ran on your parade, but um, Mike's and I, we try to um, give it another shot for the boy's sake. You have a son? And I thought you hated your ex. Hate is a strong word. <laughs> and you said, I hate my ex. Well, I, I hated the fact that, you know, I had to get married with her because she was, you know, Right. But, hell, he's here now, and I need to be a decent dad. I'm sorry. Ow. Oh. The truth is, you stole my thunder. I was gonna dump you, but then you come in here with this great news, and now I can't be mad at you. Well, gotta go. Okay. Bye. <laughs> What are you doing? Can't sleep. Me too. Milk? No, thanks. Oh my gosh. You coming? Uh, I'm gonna watch some C-SPAN, actually. Oh. Better than milk. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel right now. Mad, confused, sad. A million questions, everything, I guess. Yeah, I guess that sums it up. Um. I'm better not calling you. But, uh, oh, please. I can't. I can't talk to her right now. I just. I know, but. Do not um, defend her. Jesus, she had 33 years? To tell me this, and she she waits until my mother's funeral? To tell me that the woman I'm grieving is not my mother, was my grandmother, and she's not my sister, she's my mother. I, <laughs> That's a lot to take in, huh? I can't, I don't know how to wrap my head around this. It's a tough one. I've wrapped my head around it for a long time. Yeah, I was, uh, I was wondering if you knew, 
if you knew this whole time and you just, yeah, you just, uh, you just never told me. You know what, Becca? Just hold on a second. Because this is a hard thing. What? What is hard for you? Look, you remember I came back from the, 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 the war. I started dating back, right? Yeah, you met at the VFW Christmas dance thing. Yeah, we met at a dance, but it was a high school dance. I was 17 and Beth was 15. And your grandmother wouldn't let me see Beth anymore after she got pregnant. She blamed me. I went off and joined the army, got as far away as I could, and... Seriously? Just listen to me. What? But I was not trying to get away from Beth or from you. What are you telling me? You're my daughter, too. How could you do this? How could you both do this? For all of these years? Why? Because it was the only way that Alice, that, you're, that your grandmother would allow us to be in your life at all. Look, I missed the first 10 years of your life. And as soon as I... Got out of the army, I came straight home, and I married Beth, and we stayed in that house, and we were around you as much as we possibly could be. How could you do this to us? I mean, how could you do this to Tony, You're the poor kid? I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. But you gotta know this is torture for us, too. This was torture for me, you know? And I didn't love you any less. I mean, maybe it was different on the outside. Maybe it looked different on the outside. But you know, inside you were always my girl. No, I, um, I feel like the earth has just dropped out beneath me. I can't. Well, it has, sweetie, but you But you are not gonna sink. I promise, we're not gonna let you. Oh. Don't you promise me anything. I don't believe a word you say to me. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Don't call me. Tell Beth not Becca, to call please. me. please. I will have someone proxy for me at the will reading. Becca, you... He's at Becca's. He went to Becca's. Why did she send that to you and not me? She's still mad at you. And I think it's good they spent some time alone now. She's worried about him. What do you mean? Did you talk to her? Yeah, we spoke last night. Did you tell her? I had to. Give me your keys.
Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I, I figured with all this weird Asian pig virus thing going around that I should probably come in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, still a non-smoker. Drinks per week? Depends on the week. Um, three to five. Okay. You definitely have a fever and considerable inflammation. Uh, no strep. Probably the flu. Uh oh, says you got a birthday next week. Mm -hmm. 37? Okay, so children, maybe? Children, no. No, no. No. I uh, don't even have a house plan. No, I travel way too much, and when I'm home, my hours are insane. I don't even have a dog, and I'd really like a dog. Look, Rigby, you're gonna have to find a new doctor. Oh, jeez, I am really sorry. I didn't come in for the flu shot this no, last no, no, year. No, no, you just... don't understand. I'm not an obstetrician. You're pregnant? What? No, that's impossible. Look, we'll have to confirm with a blood no, test. No, but we always use the condom. You ever wonder what's on the other side of that 97% effective? Welcome to the 3%. How long do I have? <laughs> Jeez, it's not a death sentence. No, it's a life sentence. What? Okay, okay, I can see you're stressed out. I'm gonna write you an antiviral for the flu. And here's the name of a great OB. Right there. Good luck. I was pretty stupid, you know. I know. That's going crazy right now. I know. I just couldn't be around them. Kids are supposed to lie to their parents, not the other way around. Yeah, well. Oh, it's so screwed up. Tony, can you give us a second? No. No. I don't want to do this now. I wanted to tell you every single day. My hands were tied. <laughs> I don't believe that mom or grandma or whatever the hell I'm supposed to call her now, I don't believe that she would want this for us. There's a lot you don't know about your grandparents. Oh. Apparently my whole life is based on a lie, so. Make that times two. Is it a lie that we love you? Both of you? I wasn't strong enough to stand up to her. I wasn't. But she was my mother. And I was 15 and scared. She took Peter away from me. I can't handle this. I have a trial in two days that I'm not prepared for. So I can't do this with you today. Okay. You know where I am. Come on, Tony. You know what, Becca? 
This really isn't a tragedy. It's not. It's actually the first time I've been able to breathe in 30 years. Hey, if you'd ever gotten pregnant, would you have considered termination? What a terribly strange thing to ask me. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Well, what are you asking me? What are you trying to say? Well, what do you think I'm saying? I think I'm saying that I want to have a baby? <sighs> Seriously, look, if I wanted to have a baby with you, I'd tell you I want to have a baby with you. So have you been reading my emails? Why would I read your emails? I don't know. Seems like an awfully strange question to come up out it's of the Rigby. blue. I saw her today. She was supposed to keep it a secret. She's pregnant. Really? I didn't even know that she was seeing anybody. She was. She's not anymore. I guess that's why. I'm just trying to figure out whether she wants to keep it or not. Got this email the other day. I've been trying to figure out how to tell you about it. Here it goes. Dear NM45729. What is this? Just keep reading. I recently submitted a request to the State Adoption Board for a copy of my family medical history. And they had very little on file, but said they would forward a message if they could. If you're reading this, then you're my biological mother. I don't wish to know your identity, and I'm not ready to give you mine. But I have some questions about my health, and I wondered if you could tell me a little about anything I should be aware of on you or my father's side. I have no record who my father might be. You should know that I have wonderful parents, and I'm very happy. Thank you. NC45729. I never told you about it because it was like a lifetime ago, and I like to pretend that it happened to someone else. It's your private life, you know, before you met me. No obligation to tell me anything. But I love you. So if you want to tell me, I'm here. Okay. 23 years ago, I was completely lost. Yeah. Then I, uh, I fell for this guy, this musician who convinced me to go on tour with him as his girl. So we were on the road for a few months and I was not prepared for that lifestyle. I mean, there were so many drugs and there were some really weird parties and really things. Anyway, after, after a couple of months, I couldn't take it anymore and I, I left and I went back home. And then I, uh, I realized that I was, I was pregnant and I really couldn't say who the father was. I couldn't even take care of myself. And uh, there was no one to help me, so I thought it would be best for the baby to give her up. You ever regret that? Every day. What do I say to her? Hi, I'm your mother. I was a complete slut and I don't know who your father is. Do you want to meet her? I don't know. I just, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. You don't need to rush it. 
give her the information that she wants. And if you need to meet her, you'll both figure it out at some point. It's gonna be okay. I really want us to see each other again, but I don't want her to find out that we're still talking. It's, it's not exactly the kind of thing that fosters trust in a marriage. Well, just give me a little bit of time to figure out how to make that happen. Me too. Okay. Oh, hey, I'm sorry I woke you up. Oh, it's all right. I, I couldn't. I couldn't sleep. I was worried. I needed a little time to think. So the uh, lone guy called. I didn't get it. Oh my god, baby! I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey, listen. I'm, um, I've been thinking about something. I was thinking about what you said earlier about leaving your parents, and you're right. You, you stood up for me. You know, you, you took a chance that I would be the guy that you hoped for. Isn't that what people in love do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what they don't do, you know, what they shouldn't do, is ask the people they love to give up other people that they love. No, that. It didn't have anything to do with you. That was my choice. But I let it happen, so I feel like it was our choice. And it was a mistake. Like, I know that it's very hard to trust anything I say right now, but since I feel like you have a little bit of pity for me, can I ask you a favor? Well, you can always ask. I want you to call your parents. No. <laughs> Why? Listen, after my mother died, there hasn't been a single day that's gone by that I don't think about what it would have been like to share every single moment with her, the good and the bad. And it's just too much burden for me to feel like I am the reason that you don't talk to your parents and God forbid something should happen to them. Kevin, no, not after the way they treated you, no. But they never treated me badly, Gail. Being careful about bringing somebody into your family, that's, that's admirable, that's not judgmental. And look at me. <laughs> I mean, they were right to be worried about their daughter's future. I don't, I don't blame them for that. I just, I know that they love you. I know that they want the best for you. And I just want you to think about it. I'm just being selfish because I'm thinking, Maybe we can move in with your parents. It's better than living in my grandma's closet <laughs> in Newark. I will think about it. Thank you. How was it tonight? Pretty tame. Made some good tips, though. How are you feeling? Super tired. I slept the whole day, so now can't really sleep. What are you watching? Just channel surfing. <clears throat> Still pretty wound up from today. What are you eating? Chocolate brownie, your faves. I'm kind of tight with the sous chef, so he made me a batch. Speaking of which, I'm gonna send you some. Thanks. Hey, don't worry, okay? Someone's gonna be a match. You know what I'd like? I'd like to know what it feels like to have a man be in love with me. I mean, really love me, not some idea of me or how I make him feel about himself. Me. What if I, what if I don't get to feel that? I think some people live really long lives and never get to feel that. I'm scared too. Do you know why I called you? I mean, after all this time. To save me from a lifetime of debauchery? <laughs> um, I guess because we've been best friends forever. You're the last person that I know that really loved me. 
My mom said that once when she came up to campus. You remember that weird modern dance recital that we were in? She said afterwards that she thought that we seemed like sisters. You know that place I was telling you about in Chinatown is getting a new shipment in from Hong Kong? I was thinking about using some of my tip money and going to buy some new brocade and boucle. <laughs> Only you could get that excited about fabrics. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was going to make you something, but if you're going to go and talk some trash, then you're on your own. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, take your seat. Uh, so, uh, I just wanted to say thanks, uh, in person for, for what you've done for me. Uh, I know what I do with music, uh, but those pictures, you really, you really captured something. Well, thanks. Thanks. I mean, you were the one that inspired it all, so really, we're just a great team. I want you on my tour. Six months. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it would be amazing to have that kind of time to, you know, like tell a, a real story. Yeah, something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah? Yeah, I just have to check the dates and clear my schedule and, yeah. All right, cool. Amazing. <laughs> hey. Don't tell me you stole Beth's car again. I don't think I'll try that one again. I took the train and she knows I'm here. Mom gave me this letter for you to read. It's uh, Grandma's writing. Your name's on it too, why don't you read it? Um, sure you want to hear this? No. <laughs> to my bony Becca, my beloved girl who bewitched me the moment her eyes flashed at mine. By now you've learned the truth, and no doubt you are angry at me and Beth and Peter for robbing you of the reality of the circumstances of your birth. You are no longer a girl, but a grown person of great mind and heart. I ask you to reach deep inside yourself and ask what should have been done. A girl was not ready to be a mother, and a woman has not yet finished being one. It wasn't ideal, but I knew how to keep you whole so that you could grow up to have all the strength needed to understand that your life was filled with true love, not true labels. I loved being your mother, grandmother, and friend. And to my Tony. You might just be old enough to realize how lucky you are to have a sister. <laughs> I hope you'll be closer to her than anyone else because you two need each other. You must both forgive Beth and Peter for they have been the ones carrying this heavy burden these many years. Only you have the power to lift the weight off their hearts. Set them free, my loves. And you will be free too. Free to love any chance you get. Dear Rebecca Tony Irving, your grandmother, Alice Zelda Irving, has left her estate in the sum of $2.3 million to her grandchildren, Rebecca and Tony Irving. Holy crap. <sighs> oh, Miss Gray. How are you today? Hi, Dr. Conrad. I'm... Well, I see you were referred by your internist, Dr. Hamilton. And my notes say here that you're here for a DNC. Dilation and curatage. 
termination of pregnancy. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Wait, your nurse said you wanted to see me first? Oh, yes, we take the termination of pregnancy very seriously. Right, well, I, I can assure you, doctor, that I take everything to do with my body very seriously. And I have done extensive research on the subject, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite prepared for the medical risks. And, and as for the mental complications, you know, <laughs> it's not like I am some pubescent, you know, teenage girl with raging hormones that's surprised by her condition, you know, and unaware you know, of the choice she's making. For the record, your hormones are in fact raging. And your primary physician has noted here that you were indeed surprised to find out you were pregnant. Yes, right. I mean, I've considered having children, but I've decided against it. You know, I'm, um, I'm a photographer, and I shoot musicians mostly, and I have this hectic schedule, and I'm supposed to go on this major tour, and it is not at all compatible with pregnancy or motherhood or anything like that. It's a difficult decision for any woman. You know, I mean, really. It, it, it's so easy for men, right? I mean, they think that they have forever. But, you know, I happen to know that after 40, men's stuff is damaged, too. There's a proclivity towards schizophrenia and um, an increased risk of suicide. Or maybe it's the other way around. But, you know, it's just no one ever tells men, you know, oh, just settle down and wait for the right girl. They just, you know, whoever's in a stone's throw, just grab them and do it. I can schedule you as soon as the new year. See what I'm going on tour with Quinn after the new year? I'll, I'll make some time. Well, enjoy your holiday. And after the new year, I'll, I'll take care of you. Dear NC45729, to my natural daughter, a number seems so dehumanizing. I am so glad to know that you are happy and well. That makes me feel the decision I made was not a mistake, even if it may not have been the best choice. Of course, your need to know your family health history is wholly understandable. I have attached a file that compiles as best a complete family history that I could gather. I am, however, deeply sorry to tell you that I am not able to confirm with absolute certainty your father's identity. I was a very confused young woman and lacking in self-worth. As you have put whatever worry I have had about your life at ease, please allow me to do the same in case you've ever worried about me. I too am well and have found real love and self-worth in my life. I feel that what little sense I did have was knowing what I didn't have to give you then. And now I think perhaps knowing you are happy and have had a good home, how wonderful and lyrical to realize that I was able to give you life when your mother couldn't and that she was able to shower you with the wisdom for which I could only imagine or hope. I send you the same prayer I had 23 years ago. I wish for love and peace to be your everyday companions. Joyeux Noël. Merry Christmas. Your natural mother, NM45729. Everyone should have a tree on Christmas. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Let's hope Santa puts something under it. I stopped believing in Santa when he didn't be back my mom from the hospital. Maybe we should um, give your dad a present. I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he said all he wanted was his best friend back. Maybe you could just spend some time with your dad. Is he torturing you again? I just gave her a piece of our tree, Dad. Merry Christmas. Thank you. It's beautiful. Let's go. Merry Christmas. <sighs> Hello, Mother. 
Hey, I was just doing some last minute shopping at Tiffany's and guess who I ran into? Buying some gilt diamonds for his wife. I don't know, Mom. I can't keep track of all the bed hopping in New York, who? Harlan Kinney. Oh, come on. Did you really think I wouldn't find out? I sit on what, like a dozen foundational boards with Harlan? Six months at Wells and Kinney was enough. Yeah, for God's I've sake. I've actually been waiting to surprise you with something else that I've been working on. I have been listening to his nauseatingly insipid, watermelon-breasted wife horseshoe herself into Valentino Originals just so I could get you into that entree program. What could possibly be more important? I'm sorry, Mom. I'm not ready to discuss it with you. Waitressing? We sent you to Dalton, Andover, and Princeton so that you wouldn't have to wait on other people. How can you be so insensitive? You wouldn't last a day without Carmen in your life. Spare me. Your intellectual If an intelligent, talented woman like Carmen had half of your education, she would not be working for me. She would be me. I mean, really. What are you doing? What? Is it that... That Trisha girl from prep school? I mean, ever since you have been back in touch with her, you have been just completely off your path. You mean your path? I have never, never seen you so ungrateful. Are you on something? I'll bet that she is on drugs. You know, she always seemed like a stoner to me. Layla, what is going on with you? You know what, if you must know, she called me because she needed a friend, a real friend. And you're right, she is on drugs. She smokes a joint twice a day so that she can keep one morsel of food down since she's been shooting chemo drugs for her leukemia. Oh. Are we done, Mother? I don't want to be late for work. Just, just, and just wait. I can't. I have to go. Oh. Kevin knew I was discussing. He doesn't know that I'm talking to you. Okay, sweetie. Well, how much money do you need this time? <laughs> this time? You know, God, this is why we don't talk. It's because all you want to do is judge. No, no. I want to try to help you and your father. You would can't want... tell Dad. Oh, all right. God, why would you uh, even okay. do that? I understand. I won't. You know, this is not like the last time. This is not a loan. Okay. This is an investment. I get it. Fine. You will okay. get every cent back and more. You know, you and you and dad invest in stocks all the time. This is exactly like that. Okay. It's exactly like so when do you need the when do, do we need to um arrange the investment? I get it. I see what's going on now. What? What are you talking about? God, I am such an idiot. What? You're only doing this so that you can get control again. No, sweetheart. I, 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 we want you back in our lives. I miss you so much. You can't buy me. Okay, it's a business investment. I get it. I, respe I respect it. Kevin and his brother are getting into designer cakes. Oh, really? Cakes? Kevin and... Okay, you no, know, if you're gonna undermine this, forget it. No, 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 please. Uh... You know, I can't do this. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, it's up to you. No, it's up to you, actually. It's up to you. I haven't seen you, my child, for two years. And now if I don't say everything's just exactly right in some kind of predetermined phrases and you're gonna hang up on me, that isn't fair. It is not fair, whatever I've done. I didn't raise you to be a bully. God, what is your problem? What is my problem? You seriously, you ask me that? Don't you realize life is short and I love you and I have not seen you for two years? And that's all my fault. No, probably. It is my fault. You know, when you were born and I saw you, I didn't know that I could ever need anything that badly, that I could ever love anything that much, just my, my life just stopped. Mom. I mean, when I held you for the first time, I didn't know if it was for five minutes or five hours or five weeks. I mean, time just stopped. Mom. In a good way, in a good way. And I know 
I know I was overbearing. No, Mom. Yeah, I mean, it was just you were so perfect. I was so proud of myself for making you. You weren't overbearing. There was just so much... Pressure? Attention. And it was just relentless and overwhelming. I just never felt worth it. Oh, sweetie. My ninth birthday, I don't know if you remember that party. Yeah, you know, there, there were 16 kids and Mr. Marquis on the front lawn, two peanut allergies, and I think there was some conjurer. Right, uh, well, when I blew out my candles. Two red, three blue, four okay, white. Okay, Rain Man. <laughs> when I, when mm -hmm. I blew out my candles, um, I wished to be good. And I know that my grown-up brain now says, you know, good enough, but I will never forget that. You know, I, I want to be good. And it never came true. But you were. You were over and over for me. I mean, you were my miracle. You were my miracle, and if miracles are good, and you were good, you were good. How much do you, how much do you need? 32,000. Really, for cakes, that's, what did they, designer Louis Vuitton ingredients? You know, it's a uh, storefront, delivery truck, mixers and ovens. It actually is a very thorough business plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is really what, this is what you want to do? Sure. No. Of course not. I want to go back to college. I want to teach art history. Oh, well, th let's do that then. Let's do that. It's easier said than done. No, we, I bet you could get enrolled in the fall. It's not about logistics. <laughs> It's more a question of childcare facilities. Oh my God, really? Oh, sweetie, that's wonderful. You're not a touch disappointed. No, why would I be disappointed? Oh, of course I don't not. Know. Because I never exactly accomplished anything spectacular. Producing a daughter is spectacular. Well, we don't know yet if it's a boy. It's or... a girl. It's a girl. Oh, you know that for I a fact. do. I would bet a designer cake business on it, yes. Why do you think that? Seriously. Have you met your grandmother? Uh, yeah. Is she not the sweetest woman in the universe? Absolutely. No argument from me. Well, I made her life miserable for years. Really? Yeah. She yeah. never told me that. No. <laughs> that, that is actually really funny. I needed to have you to teach me how to be a daughter to my mother. Oh, God, it's definitely <laughs> going to be a girl, isn't it? <laughs> and she is going to torture me. But I guess it's no more than I deserve, right? It's no more than you deserve. Hey, I'm home. Who are you talking to? My mom. Excuse me, is someone sitting here? Oh. <laughs> Miss Gray. Rigby. Of course, Rigby. You mind? No. Hi, Dr. Conrad. What are you doing here? Eating. <laughs> right. Why are patients always so surprised when they see their doctors in the real world? <laughs> Eating and grocery shopping. I guess it spoils the illusion. Mm -hmm. No, we don't want to see our superheroes forced to endure the mundane. Mm. I'm really sorry about the diatribe, about the man, woman thing the other day. I kind of rant when I get nervous. That's fine. How's the pasta? Yeah, it's really good. Hi, oh, hi. what can I get you? Hmm, uh, a glass of Chianti and uh, seafood marinara. Thanks. Rigby, such a cool name. 
It, it's my mom's maiden name. Her dad never had any boys, so you know the story. Mm. Oh, so did you want a glass of wine? Um, I thought I wasn't supposed to. Oh, I thought you were going to. Uh... No, I am. Yes, I am still. I just, just thought maybe I shouldn't. Probably a good idea. Can I ask you a personal question? Does your wife ever mind you working so closely with other women? I look at the body clinically for a living. I mean, lips can be used for talking as well as kissing. The hands for working as well as touching. The female organs for giving birth as well as conceiving. I mean, the whole body can be sexual. It's all about the context. I don't think I'd be too happy if my husband did what you do for a job. Hmm. I didn't realize you were married. No, I'm not. You know? I'm just saying, if I were. Oh. Did you deliver your own kids? I did? I don't think I could do that. If my husband were my doctor, I'd have to keep some mystery. that way. I'm this way. It was nice seeing you. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You bring her water, <clears throat> and I think it's done. Okay, it's pretty gone. Cameras. Can't you see she's drunk? Get off of her! What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Get the hell off my bus. Yeah. Come on, hold on. Hold on, sweetie. Nelson. Nelson. Hi. Hi, Mom. Wow. Look at you. You look good, Mom. Mm, it's different, huh? <laughs> yeah. They don't let you get too fixed up here. They say it's like another way to mask your feelings. It's good to see you, Mom. Mom. I thought you'd given up on me. Third time's a charm, though, I think. I hope. You okay? I'm sorry I haven't been to see you, but there, there was a new album and just finished the tour. That's really great, honey. Wow. Everything sounds like it's going real good for you. I should have called sooner. No, you're calling now. Um, I didn't just call to say hi. Things got a little out of control on tour. I got a little out of control. I almost did something really bad.
trying to get help. I, f I figure if my mom can do it, I can too. And after I was wondering if you'd come and stay with me for a while, you know, help me get some things straight. I'm so sorry. I'm so ashamed. Did I do this to you? Oh, it's okay, Mom. It's okay. I... Even if everyone else went and left us, we're still here. <laughs> you and me. Good morning, Miss Gray. I'm going to be giving you some twilight sedation for the procedure. Okay, what's, what's that mean? It means you won't feel any pain, but you'll be slightly aware of the room and what's going on. Just kind of like you're in a groggy state. May I just speak to Dr. Conrad for a minute? Well, the doctor's on a very tight schedule this morning, so why don't you let me go ahead and get the IV started, and the doctor will come in and talk to you while we prep you, okay? <clears throat> Look, ma'am. I'm about to potentially end a life here and certainly change my own, so forgive me if I'm not overly concerned with the schedule of you or the doctor. I need to speak with him before anybody touches me. Everything okay? Yeah. No. I mean, I don't know. I mean, right now, at, at this instant, in my life, when everything is under the best of circumstances and I am young and healthy and I have a roof over my head, sometimes I'll take a vitamin and I'll, and I'll choke or I'll, I'll get food poisoning and I'll be up all night vomiting and I'll faint on the bathroom floor and I'll think, what if there wasn't anyone? What if no one's there? No, and it's scary, I'm scared. And then I think how much worse it'll be when I'm not as young and not as healthy. And then I think, is that a reason to have a kid just so they'll be there to pick you up when you fall just because you were there for them? I mean, look at me. I am not there for my mother because I'm too much of a coward to look in her face and see that she doesn't know who I am. So I pay someone to wash my mother's backside because I am too afraid to see my perfect, gorgeous angel of a mother lose her mind. I mean, God, I'm not fit to take care of anyone, parent or child. But, I mean, I mean, people have been doing this since the dawn of man, right? Well, they don't stop and contemplate all the what ifs. Because if they did, there wouldn't be anyone here. I want to keep the baby. We can do that. Yeah, definitely, we can do that. Aren't they just gorgeous? <laughs> They're amazing. Why can't you just tell your mom? She could like totally help you. It's just that if she helps me, I might never know what part is me and what part is her. And if I'm gonna do this, then I need to know what I'm really capable of, you know? Like really capable of as in alone.
No, this is a disaster. If you're gonna do the Gotham ganache, then you have to try the Harlem truffles. Sure. Okay, okay, get me half a dozen Gotham ganache and 12 Harlem truffles. You heard the boss, boys. Step up the pace. Let's do this. What happened? I thought she didn't want to meet. Um, no, she sent me an email saying she wanted to meet as soon as possible. When? Right now. I'm on my way to meet her at the duck pond. She said that she would have something red with her, an umbrella or something. Oh my God. I think I see something red. Oh, I'm so nervous. I think I'm gonna get sick. No, you're not gonna throw up, all right? Look, take three deep, long breaths. Remember, this isn't the first time you're seeing her. You're the first person she ever met. I love you. I love you too. Look, I'm happy for you, darling. I'm happy for me, too. I'm gonna be somebody's stepfather. Okay. Bye. Miss Scott, hi. It's Layla, Layla Chapman from the Pig in the Cow building. Well, we met on FaceTime. You were speaking to my mother, Nina Chapman. Miss Scott, are you okay? I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm supposed to be meeting someone here. Is there someone I can call for you? March 15th, 1991. You were born at 3.22 p.m. March 15, 1991. It was a rainy day. You were the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. You? It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day and it's a perfect spring day. And the air smells like your perfume. I'm having a baby, Mom, and I can't stop thinking about you. I almost didn't want to have her because I couldn't bear to love somebody as much as you and risk my heart. busy looking into other people's windows and creating their stories, I forgot to create my own. Mom? In here, Layla. Hi. Hey. Here. What are you doing? Well, I'm working. You know, we've got that couture gala coming up, and I need you to help me pick a frock. What are you talking about? I thought that was decided by a committee months ago. Aren't you wearing Zach Posen? I am, that's why I never eat, but... I was wondering what you're gonna wear. Really? Well, how come you never let me go? Yes, well, since then, I've been privy to some new information that makes me think that it might be a good idea. Why didn't you tell me that this is what you were working on? Mm -hmm. Waitress? But Georgina helped me streamline them a little. Mm -hmm. Can't believe Trisha sent them to you. Yeah, well, she knew you wouldn't. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me this is what you were working on? 
I happen to be pretty good at launching hot new designers. Really? I don't know. I thought... What if you hated them? What if you thought that I sucked at this? I wanted to earn your praise. Not be entitled to it. is the one. It's sleek, it's architectural, it's classic, it's you. I like this one too. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I can't tell if I get it from her or from you. <laughs> so, why didn't you just tell me you wanted to meet her? I didn't think I did. When Trisha got sick, it made me want to know more about my medical history, so I sent a letter. And then, when Trisha died, I thought, what if that were me? Oh, honey, it's... No. Mom, I mean it. I thought... What if I go my entire life without getting a chance to just look at her? I mean, I can't describe it, but... You have no idea what it's like to not know a single person who has your hands or your eyes or your crooked teeth. I just... I just wanted to see her. Are you mad? It's it's as natural as breathing, honey. Everybody wants to know where they come from. Oh, I'm I'm always so amused that I have that same crinkle here <laughs> in my nose, like grandma. And that I sit in the car with my purse <laughs> on my lap, just the same way. She lives in my building. Huh? And she's working with you. And that's a weird coincidence. Oh, it's not a coincidence. I think it's a mother's instinct to search for her child. I am sure some way she was looking for you her whole life. Thanks, Mom. And anyway, I'm just, I'm just, I'm so dang impressed. I'm so proud of you. I love you, Mom. Oh. More than, well, <laughs> just more and more. <laughs> I love you too. Surprise! Surprise. <laughs> I know it's Mother's Day, but can I still call you Beth? did all this? Well, I had help. So much for soccer practice. And you. Oh. Mm. All right, who wants champagne? I do. I do. Can I have some? No. Come on, you guys. Here, help me. Come on. I missed you so much. I missed you too. And I'm sorry it's been so long. I just... You needed time. I did. I really did. You know, I'm just... I'm just lucky to have you. No more secrets. No. No more secrets. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, toast time. You, you. No, you get the little one. No, that's for you. Two mothers who by any other name are just as sweet. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. I can do this, Dr. Conrad. Call me Andrew. You're gonna do great, Rigby. But I gotta tell you something. Hmm. I can't be a doctor today. What are you talking about? Now? Now. Why do doctors keep doing this to me? <sighs> listen, just listen to me, Rigby. I'm not married. I've never been married, I don't have any kids. I use the ring to keep a professional distance from my patients. But with you, it, it didn't work. I don't know if you have any feelings for me, but if there's even the slightest chance, I can't go into that delivery room with you. Really? Yeah, I think I have to be the keeper of the mysteries. Is that okay? Hi, Rigby. I'm Dr. Barnard. I'll be bringing your girl into the world today. I need to tell you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> I had my daughter, Mom. She's just starting to look like something that might turn into a person. I was so scared. But now, looking back at all the lives and stories of others, I know it will be all right. Some people can't see the love they have until they see it through someone else's eyes. Some people have no mother, and others have more than one. Others don't see that mothers come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes there for just a moment, and sometimes they remain for a lifetime. Her name is your name. So that when mine dissolves into mom, yours can come to life again. Every time I call to her, Lydia. I hope your last thought before you slipped into the darkness of your mind was that I would remember everything about you. 
everything. I would never let a tear fall from your eyes. No, 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 no. Cause everything you are to me. Ooh, I could never let you hurt inside. It means so much and I'm so thankful that you're in my life. And I appreciate your love and all your sacrifice. Without you by my side, I never could survive. I wouldn't be the woman standing here before your eyes. You taught me strength and you gave me guidance. Whenever faith was lost, you were there to find it. And all because a mother's love is unconditional. With all my heart and all my soul, I wanna let you know. Cause even when 